so far in our discussion on genetic inheritance, we focused on a specific type of mode of inheritance known as complete dominance. Now, in complete dominance, we have the existence of a dominant gene and the existence of a recessive gene. And when we mix a dominant gene with a recessive gene to produce a heterozygous individual, that dominant gene basically hides, it inhibits the effect of that recessive gene. So that's what we mean by a uh, complete dominance. Now we're going to focus on a different type of mode of inheritance known as incomplete dominance, which is different than complete dominance. So to demonstrate what incomplete dominance is, let's suppose we have the following two parental phenotypes. So we have the following two parents. So we have a true breeding red plant that we cross with the true breeding white plant. Now a true breeding red plant means both of those alleles code for that red color, while a true breeding white plant means both of those alleles found on the pair of homologous chromosomes code for that white color. Now when we actually cross these two individuals, all the offsprings that are produced will be heterozygous and we can see that based on the Punnett square here. So this true breeding red plant will produce only one type of sex cell, only one type of gamete, namely the CR, where the C stands for color and R stands for the red color. So we have two, uh, we have two of these slots which basically describe the same type of gamete that is produced by this particular true breeding red plant. And likewise, these are the two, um, these are the two gametes that are produced by the true breeding white plant. So we have CW and CW where W stands for the color white. Now when, let's say this is the female, this is the male, when this X cell combines with this sperm cell, we produce this heterozygous individual. And likewise, when each one of these X cells and sperm cells combines, all of these individuals will be heterozygous. Now, in this particular case, what is the phenotype of the offspring that is produced? Is it white or is it red? Now, if we had complete dominance, what that would mean is this would either be red or it would be white, depending on which one of these color traits, red or white, is dominant with respect to the other. But what we actually obtain are pink flowers. So all of these individuals, all of these heterozygous individuals will have a phenotype that is somewhere in between, is intermediate of these two different types of phenotypes. So all the offspring in this particular case are heterozygous for that color trait. So that means we have one red allele and one white allele. Now notice that neither of the trait is dominant with respect to the other and that's because these offspring that are produced are neither red nor white, they're somewhere in between. And so what that means is the expression of one allele will not actually be inhibited by the other allele. And in such a case, the phenotype of that offspring will be somewhere in between, somewhere intermediate between the two true breeding parents. Parents. And this type of mode of inheritance is known as incomplete dominance. Now, it's important to emphasize the following important point. Incomplete dominance is not the same thing as blending inheritance. And that's because when this process, when this mode of inheritance takes place, that offspring will still have a pair. <coughs> Uh, it will still have a pair of chromosomes in which one of the chromosomes will have a distinctly different allele than the other chromosome. In this case, will have the red uh, allele. In this case, will have the white allele. So, incomplete dominance is not an example of blending inheritance because the heterozygous individual that is produced still has two distinct alleles. We have that red allele and we have the white allele. Now the question is why exactly is this pink? Why is it in between these two phenotypes? 
Well, because this offspring has twice as less of the red pigment as this individual, and because it has twice as less of the red pigment, it will be less red than this individual. And so it will be somewhere in between these two different flowers, the red and the white flower. Now, another question that we can ask is, what exactly will be uh, what exactly will the genotype and the phenotype distribution be when we'll take a pink flower and cross it with itself so let's suppose we take two of these offspring pink flowers that are heterozygous for that color trait and we cross them what will be the distribution of the offspring so once again let's apply our Punnett square. Now, this produces two types of gametes, and this also produces two types of gametes. So let's suppose that this individual is the male individual, and this individual is the female individual. So let's say that this is basically our sperm cells, and these are our egg cells. So when this sperm cell combines with this egg cell, we produce a true breeding red color. When this mates with this, we produce a heterozygous individual. When this mates with this, we once again produce a heterozygous individual. And when this sperm cell combines with this egg cell, we produce a homozygous white individual. So we see that 25% are homozygous red, 50% are heterozygous pink because two-fourths, so one, two out of four are heterozygous pink and one-fourth, so 25%, are homozygous white. So we see a 25 to 50 to 25, or one to two to one ratio of phenotypes. But not only that, if we examine the genotypes, we're also going to see a one to one, uh, a one to two to one ratio of genotypes. So we, co uh, we conclude that whenever we're dealing with incomplete dominance, the genotype ratio of the offspring is exactly the same as the phenotype ratio. And this is not the same thing that we see when we're dealing with complete dominance. In complete dominance, usually, the genotype ratio is not the same thing as the phenotype ratio. So one thing to remember about incomplete dominance is you can actually tell exactly what the genotype is directly from the phenotype. So if we know that the phenotype of this color of this flower is pink, then we know that this individual has two alleles. One allele is the red allele, the other one is the white allele. So this will be the genotype of this particular individual. So three important things to remember about incomplete dominance. Number one, in incomplete dominance, if we cross these true breeding plants for two different types of alleles, the product will be intermediate between these two phenotypes. Important point number two, the genotype and the phenotype ratio is exactly the, sa <clears throat> the same as we saw in this particular case. So we have a one to two to one ratio of phenotype and a one to two to one ratio of genotype. And finally, just by knowing what the phenotype is, we can determine exactly what the genotype is whenever we're dealing with incomplete dominance.